I had a sister who was working for an international NGO, um, and it took her to um, various South American countries, and, and then she ended up working in, uh, in Kenya and Africa. When she was in Ecuador, one of the observations that she made to me was, because there is so much bureaucracy and corruption involved in, in, in the utilities, for example, um, your ability to call up the telephone company and ask them to install a telephone line in your home is now so bureaucratically tied up. And, you know, the, the suspicion is that, that um, there's an aspect of corruption that is involved. In other words, pay somebody money and you'll get your telephone line. Don't pay them and it could take two years. Her observation was that with the advent of the cell phone, that there are going to be countries that literally are going to be able to jump the phase of going through landlines. They're simply going to go from no phones to cell phones. And now you don't need anybody to come to your house and bring the telephone line to your home and put in a landline telephone. You just skip that process. Um, I think that, that um, developing countries are particularly um, in a good position to take advantage of um, technology across the board. Um, we, we see, for example, what has happened in the area of human rights by the ability of people to communicate via text and via cell and via the internet. Um, and what a difference it has made in, in developing countries to get stories out, to get um, communication, to allow people to gather, to organize, to meet. Um, it, it's going to have huge implications in terms of education um, in, in countries where faculties, teachers, are in such short supply and so limited. Um, I think that the, that the real potential of technology in developing countries is only now beginning to be seen. And I think it's going to, to be uh, dramatic in assisting developing countries move forward.